It's lovely to be with you all again today. Thank you for receiving me. Today we're going to talk about the lone sheep. Now you may be wondering what inspired this talk. Um, on my altar at home, I have this lovely wood carving that I picked up when I was in Jerusalem. After I finished my walk from Rome to Jerusalem, I stayed in Jerusalem for um, about a month and walked around the old city quite a bit and um, got to meet a few artisans. And I love artisans. I'm married to an artist, obviously. Um, but I loved um, the whole idea of this lone sheep, this idea that no matter where we are, we are always held in the arms of the great shepherd. And so it inspired me to reflect about this world that we live in and how we can go about trying to bridge this inner world and the outer world in which we live. Because the inner world, you know, it's the place where we come to feel nourished and sustained and held. And the outer world feels like at times like it's depleting us more than anything else. And at times it feels like not that there is just a divide, there's a chasm, a huge chasm between our inner world and our outer world. And so we retreat. We retreat to our sanctuaries, be they their inner sanctuary, our personal ones, or the collective sanctuaries where we gather. And I think sometimes we gather to escape from all of it. <laughs> but I think more, the truth is closer to the fact that we are trying to make sense out of all that we see, somehow make peace with all of the happenings of our outer world, and in some way maybe connect with a love and with a power and a grace that's greater than ourselves that will nourish us once again so that we can bring that out in service and in love into the world. I can tell you that's certainly my case. <laughs> um, I watch the news. I know what's happening in the world, um, but rarely do I delve deep, deep, deep into the news and into what's happening unless I am completely centered. And I'll speak about that a little bit later on. And like you, here, I consider myself um, a light worker, somebody who's here in their own way, bringing a consciousness of, of love and brotherhood and unity into the world. And so I watch the news and I flip through it and I go, well, okay, well, what am I supposed to do with all this now? <laughs> I guess maybe I'm not alone in, in that feeling. It's like, what the heck am I supposed to do with this? Well, let's see what we can do about this. Um, let's take a very innocuous example, something, you know, not too crazy, something a little low key. Let's consider, for example, um, the president of our great neighbors down to the south of us. <laughs> something low key. <laughs> It's interesting how just the mere mention of his, I haven't mentioned the name yet. I just, <laughs> I just mentioned this individual, but it's interesting, interesting how our immediate reaction is this. And yet a second ago, we said we all consider ourselves light workers, right? Individuals of the light. And that to me is a sacred task. And I imagine to you all, you consider that a sacred task indeed. And so if we say that we are here as light workers, then I believe that our first step is to honor that role that we have chosen for ourselves. And as light workers, we know that we are all connected. We are all one. There is no separation. And as was mentioned earlier in this service, that means that the divine spark that shines in me, in you, also shines in that wonderful brother of ours, because he is our brother, it shines in him too, no matter how deeply buried it may be. And it is deeply buried. All we have to do, obviously, is look at all of his actions to see just how far he has removed himself from the essence of the light and the core and the divinity that he truly is. And we can sit here in judgment of it, we can judge him, we can laugh at him, we can do all these things at him. Of course, we can. Or, as in the parable of the lone shepherd, I'm sure you all know the parable, that if but one sheep is lost or wandering, the shepherd 
will leave the entire flock to go look for that one lost sheep to bring it back into the fold. That's the parable that I believe Jesus told in one of his sermons. And so, I'm sure the shepherd, when he goes out looking for his lost sheep, is not berating that sheep, is not cursing it for being so stupid as to leave the fold and get out there and get himself lost. No, I'm sure, like any good shepherd would do, with a great deal of love and patience and care, it would go look for that shepherd and bring it back into the fold. And so if we consider ourselves as bringers or perhaps shepherds of a new consciousness based on this unity and this brotherhood, then I believe that we are all called to bring that lone sheep home. Now, how do we do that? <laughs> la la la, big question. <laughs> well, I believe it begins by being good shepherds to ourselves first. And that means acknowledging all of the emotions, the thoughts, the feelings that this lone sheep evokes in us. So let's name a few of them, okay? What does he, this lone sheep, this brother of ours, what does he evoke? What emotions does he evoke with all that you see him doing? Yep, disgust, despair, dishonesty, anger, fury in some cases, sadness, perhaps fear, impotence, hopelessness, all of that. All of those we name. We have to look at those feelings, those thoughts that he is evoking in us. And I look at those feelings because he evokes through different eras. <laughs> and periods, those feelings as well in me. And what I do is I look at those feelings now. I look at them. I look at the anger, the despair, the hopelessness, and I say, I see you. The first step is to acknowledge that it's there. You don't hide from your feelings. You don't run away from them. You acknowledge them. I see you. I see your pain. Now, I'm not doing anything with that lone sheep right now. There's nothing to do with him. It has everything to do now with looking at what he is evoking inside of me. Those emotions, those feelings, they're a part of me. They're the lost part of me that's also wandering. That's the lost part of me that's in darkness, that's in the shadows, that doesn't know what the light looks like or feels like. And so when I say, I see you, I say, I see you. So now I have the opportunity to be able to look at you and see who you are, transform you and love you back into your natural perfection, into your natural state. The I see you is the first step. I say thank you to all of these emotions. Thank you. I get to see you finally. Thank you for showing me what you look like. Thank you because otherwise you're just buried inside of me roaming around, but at least now I can name you. I can hold you. Thank you for showing yourself to me. I love you. The most powerful three words, I've spoken about this before, the most powerful words you can ever say to yourself and to that part of you that is lost, that anger, that fury, that hopelessness, that is not light. That is not the core of who you are. This is what you're going to pour your love into. Of course I love you. You're my creation. You're a part of me. How can I reject you? Of course I'm going to pour all of my care and love and energy and healing into you. You're a part of me. And I'm sorry for whatever it is that put that energy in me. It's me. I know I put it there. Because I'm a soul on a journey. And that journey is about learning how to choose from love learning how to be in union with my own divinity so that I can express that in the world. And obviously, in my journey as a soul, I didn't do that very well. I was learning. I was learning like a child who's learning how to walk, like a child who's learning how to connect in every moment with love and express that. And I made mistakes. So when you say, I'm sorry, you know, please forgive me, you're only forgiving that part of you 
that simply didn't know any better. You were simply a child, and you didn't know how to choose from love. You were practicing. This is what your life experience, this lifetime, other lifetimes, doesn't matter. It's about you and the experience of learning to choose and to act from love consistently. And we've all made mistakes, and we'll continue to make mistakes. And to love yourself, to love that anger, to love that emotion, to love it all, as your creation makes you the shepherd of your own lost parts, those wayward parts of you, those fear-filled parts of you that are wandering around, that you are now getting to bring home to you. You're bringing them back to the love that they are. And because each and every one of us here is connected to a greater love, shall we say we are all beloved sheep of a much greater divine shepherd? (laughs) Because you are that, you now can connect to that, turn yourself upwards towards that great shepherd and open yourself up to receive all of the love that that great shepherd has for you. You think your love for your child creations is large. Imagine that great love of the shepherd that's pouring down upon you in that moment. And you don't have to ask for it. You don't have to beg for it. You don't have to supplicate. Nothing. It's there. That love is there all the time. The love of the great shepherd is there in every moment. And in the moment you open yourself up to it, it just floods you completely. And I imagine it in me flooding like a pouring down upon me like a golden honey or a molasses thick coming down, 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 coming down over my mental body, my thoughts, coming down over my emotional body, flowing down into my etheric body, down into my physical body, until it fills every single atom of my being and every space in between. (laughs) This is who I am. This is the fullness of who I am. And as that golden honey is flowing through, it is not only healing, it is transforming, it is bringing back to its natural perfection, to its divine state, all of those emotions, all of that anger, all of that fury, all of the hopelessness, it's bringing that back to its natural state. And to that grand shepherd, I say thank you. Thank you. I love you. Thank you for pouring all of this love into me. Thank you for reinforcing that light in me. Thank you for helping me to forgive myself because I'm probably harder on me than anyone else. So thank you for helping me to remember that this is who I am. Thank you for opening me up to a new way of being that is grounded in this magnificent light. Now, I know some of you here have probably heard of someone by the name of Dr. Len Hugh. Have you heard of him? Some of you have. Dr. Len Hugh, for those who have not, is a Hawaiian kahuna or a shaman, I guess, who um, healed an entire ward of, I think it was 100 people, of a criminally insane, very dangerous individuals. He healed them all by never meeting with them once. He never saw them. He never spoke to them. He never actually saw physically any one of them. He sat, at, excuse me, he sat in a room and with the files of all of the inmates that were in that prison. And with every file that he opened up, he read about what the crime was that that individual committed and he merely cleaned himself. He dealt with all of the emotions and the negativity and the thoughts that were coming up as a result of seeing that person's file. And all he did was he said the words, I love you, I'm sorry, please forgive me, and thank you. Those are the foundations of what's called Ho'oponopono that some of you have seen. I've been working with Ho'oponopono for at least 10 years, okay? And when I first read it, I mean, it's, it's an incredible story, I mean, healing all of these people without ever seeing them. I thought, wow, but I didn't like the idea of just repeating words by rote, just repeating them, because I thought, what's he, who's he talking to? And so 
he's talking to the divine, I imagine, but for me it felt incomplete. So I changed it <laughs> and I modified it to what I just spoke about. I spoke, this is what I've, you know, this is my, my version of Ho'oponopono, which I've kind of tenderly called Mo'oponopono. <laughs> With all due respect to Dr. Lin Hugh, I'm not taking his material. All that to say that um, this, is what, this was his original teaching. Um, and he believes that you don't actually have to do anything with the other person. It has absolutely nothing to do with what that other person is doing. Or It's all about you and how you're reacting and how you're responding. And so if you are clearing and cleaning and transforming all of those energies inside of you, well, then you're automatically doing it for him and for everybody else because it's all vibration. The world is all vibration, it's all energy, we're all connected. So in the moment that you're able to do it for yourself, you're actually the healing and the transformation that you do for you, you're actually doing for others, okay? I mean, who am I to argue who healed a whole ward <laughs> full of, you know, full of people and they actually closed the ward afterwards and every individual went back to being a functioning member of society. So I'm not gonna argue with Dr. Len Hugh. Um, I just felt that for me, I needed to go that one step further to say from now that I am filled with this light, now that I have all of this in me, I want to bring it into the world. This is my cup runneth over. I am so filled with this light that I now bring this light and imagine this light going out into the world and touching and being in the hearts of every single person that is living on this earth and surrounding this planet and out into the universe. That spark of divinity and light that is in me, I especially focus on those lone sheeps of the world. And I imagine that light just growing and growing and expanding and expanding and taking over every single part of their bodies. That same golden light from the golden shepherd is also pouring down on them too, pouring all over them like a liquid honey until it completely floods them with light to the point where they have no other choice but to respond to the frequency of that light. They have no other option but to be filled with that light and then be acting in consequence to that as servants of that brotherhood and that unity of consciousness. That's how I use the material that's given to me. So yeah, I still watch the news and yes, I'll still flip through the headlines. And when I'm centered, when I'm in this place of complete light, yeah, I will dig deep and I will read. And I will read completely pouring love into everything that I'm reading. It's not about what's happening out there. It's about what I'm doing in response to it. And when I sense that, okay, here comes the tension again. <laughs> here comes the tension. Here comes the anxiety. I can't believe he did this. Okay. I go back to Moni. I begin with that feeling that I see, the anger, the despair. I love you. I see you. I see you there. I love you. Thank you for showing yourself to me. Great shepherd, divine shepherd, thank you for filling this and transforming it to light back to its natural state. Thank you. I love you. And to the lone sheep that is the cause of all of this and that is bringing all of these feelings and emotions out, I say also, I love you. Thank you for taking on the role that you're taking, that I may now be able to see all that is inside of me that is not light, that I can transform it into light and stand more grounded and more firmly as the light that I can now bring in service to the world. That's how I deal with the outer world and bridging the inner with the outer. I hope this serves you today. <laughs>